So last week when I was preparing for the Sunday message on 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, I came across a writing by Warren Wearsby on our walk with God. And I really liked it, so I thought that I'd share some of that with you uh, during our midweek this week. And this isn't exactly what he said, but I borrowed enough of his idea here where I figured I'd give credit where credit is due. As Christians, it's a pretty common thing to metaphorically describe our ongoing relationship with God as a walk. Our walk with God is our Christian life. If you want to ask someone how they're doing, like sincerely ask them how they're doing spiritually, you may ask them, how is your walk with God going? I think we all kind of intuitively understand the word picture here. But have you ever spent much time really thinking through this? There's a lot more than meets the eye. When we become a Christian, we begin our walk with God. And it's common to talk about the beginning as a first step. We say that we step out in faith. We make Jesus our savior. We decide to give this Bible thing a go. So we step out in faith. And when a second step in faith follows a th the first and a third step follows the second and then a fourth step and so on and so forth, we have this collection of steps in faith and pretty soon we're walking, aren't we? Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seven says, for we live by faith, not by sight. And that's what the walk with God is all about. It's stepping out in faith and then taking another step in faith and then another and another. And that's our walk with God. And listen, it's not about walking in circles either. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 says, Therefore, let us move beyond elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God. We keep putting one foot in front of the other and we move in a single direction. We should be spiritually going somewhere in our walk with God. We should be walking a path of maturity. We also need to make sure we're walking in the path of light. 1 John chapter 1 verses 5 through 7 says, This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us all from sin. We need to be walking in faith. We need to be progressing in our walk. We need to be walking in the light. We've got to be progressing in the right direction. And finally, we know that all walks come to an end, and ours will too, at least the walk that we're doing in our earthly bodies will. Genesis chapter 5 verse 24 says, Enoch walked faithfully with God, then he was no more because God took him away. Now, the story of our earthly lives is probably going to end a little bit differently than it did for Enoch, unless we get raptured out of here, but that's a whole other discussion. But either way, like Enoch, if we walk faithfully with God, someday we're going to take that last step and we'll step into the presence of the Lord. And what a destination that will be. This idea of walking with God is a great word picture, but if you really think it through, it's a lot more than just a static idea that describes a relationship. This idea of a walk with God covers the entire Christian life from start to finish, and it is an absolutely amazing journey. I hope this has been helpful. Hope it's been interesting. And until next time, Lord willing, there is a next time. May God bless you and your family.